where to from here? Because there is a, sort of a very real reality, I think, for the markets that inflation may actually be something that's real. Do you still think that some of these indicators that we're seeing right now could be transitory? I don't think it's going to be transitory. So going into 2021, if you look at soft and hard commodities last year, we actually did see uh, price increases ex oil. So if we continue to see successful vaccination rollouts around the world, this sort of pent up demand, consumer spending being underpinned by the so-called free money and the stimulus we have seen from various central banks, then prices and inflation are expected to go high. So definitely something to continue to monitor. When it comes to China, though, how long do we see Chinese factories continuing to be able to act as a kind of, I guess, a shock absorber globally for the surge across commodities? You know, very interestingly, when we look at China and we look at, you know, the markets in terms of, of gauging of direction using three key drivers, and it's the flattening of the COVID curve, the pace of economic recovery and policy response and implementation. And China really has done incredibly well using all three measures. So in terms of where we're at in China, it's a much more normalized situation versus, let's say, some of the developed markets, because the Chinese policymakers didn't throw huge amounts of stimulus into the economy. So if we look at Chinese 10-year bonds, you know, they're about 3% versus, let's say, US 10 years. So it's a much more normalised situation in terms of where to um, go from this point onwards. We have heard from prominent speakers when it comes to where inflation is headed and perhaps where Federal Reserve policy is headed. It's interesting that you mentioned how China is more normalised. Just take a listen at what former New York Fed President Bill Dudley had to say about where inflation could take the Fed uh, when it comes to rate hikes. Liftoff in terms of short term rates isn't going to happen until the economy is already at full employment. So there can be a big gap between where they are starting and where they need to be to keep the economy from overheating. So it seems to me that at least a quarter point of meeting seems like the most likely uh, uh, template. When they actually have to catch up, the level of short term rates is going to climb much higher than what's currently priced into financial markets. So, Catherine, if we do see the Federal Reserve moving more quickly after starting to hike rates, are we going to see an in intensifying of those moves that you just mentioned because of the differentials with China? Uh, more than likely. And don't forget, from a correlation perspective, uh, the Chinese mainland market is the least correlated market uh, with the United States. So, you know, I think going forward, you're probably going to see a bit of volatility as, you know, investors and commentators really kind of digest a lot of the data coming out. What's really key, though, is the health of a country or an economy's labor market. So very important to watch that. And also, so this consumer and business confidence, whether it does indeed pick up. When it comes to the rotation trade that we're seeing because of all of these concerns, where do you find the most opportunities, especially since value is not all equal, right? Uh, exactly. And, you know, what happened last year, especially in, let's say, the Chinese market and even the year before last, is that you had this very crowded trade emerge. Mm -hmm. So it was very momentum driven, key sectors, key names in those sectors really driving the returns. So you saw a lot of unloved areas of the market where companies were still delivering on earnings, um, they were still paying good dividend yields. And that for us is a really interesting area. So it's sort of the small cap value space, which hasn't yet seen that rotation that large cap value names names or the outperformance large cap value names have undertaken. So a lot of interesting areas in the unloved sectors, which are now gaining more and more prominence. Here in the U.S., we saw retail investors becoming very prominent, whether it's in the U.S. stock markets with GameStop or cryptocurrencies. Are you expecting to see such uh, similar moves across Asia? Are there any markets that are susceptible to these moves? It's already happened. And, you know, it's not just the Chinese market that, you know, saw that momentum crowded trade occur. If you look at Taiwan, if you look at Korea, retail investors now make up around 80 to 90 percent of daily turnover. So you get that very thematic trade come through. Although, you know, whilst it's great, we are seeing the rise of the Asian investor base to offset any potential flight to quality that we used to see from, let's say, foreign investors leaving the area in a period of, of risk off. I would warn that, you know, in Korea, for example, seen margin debt as a percentage of GDP go to three and a half percent this year. So that was you know, a couple of months ago. And we haven't seen levels like this around three percent since uh, 1999, pre-GFC. And also last year, you started seeing these margin debt levels go up. So just something to monitor. 
Catherine, is U.S. exceptionalism, or I suppose more conversely for, for our focus, Asia being left behind as we see this divergence in now both the, the, the pandemic situation, you know, uh, further waves of outbreaks, but more specifically the vaccine rollout. Is that a narrative that is something investors should be concerned about this year when it comes to investing in this region? It's one of those drivers that I mentioned in terms of the, the flattening of the COVID curve. Generally speaking, Asia's done quite well. I mean, that's you know, the obvious situation in India at the moment. Mm -hmm. The opening up of borders is also key. So if you look at Chinese you know, retail sales, we're back to 97% pre-COVID levels. The area that you aren't seeing spending is obviously international travel versus domestic travel that we saw during the Labor weekend. So, you know, this opening of borders is important, but whether these economies can continue to recover, grow, and then again, policy response, the balance sheets of, of the governments in, in Asia, probably a lot more healthy than let's say some of the developed markets.